If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Nikola Tesla. Welcome to The Frequency Shifter Show. I'm your host, Corinne Summers, founder of Artisan Pharmacy. In this show, we explore ways to raise the frequency of ourselves, one another, and our planet. We're digging deep into all things metaphysical, from what is frequency, to the power of sound, the Schumann resonance, our DNA, Reiki, the energy of water, and beyond. All to shift our minds and bodies back into alignment with richer states of connection, elevated awareness, and maximum human potential. And we're bringing on the global experts and thought leaders to share their wisdom as they let us pick their brains around all these juicy, mysterious topics. First of all, I don't know who Ricky is and metaphysical, Schumann's Renaissance. What are you, I don't even know. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. I need us to take a step back and calm down. What are we even talking about here? (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to mention, I have a co-host. The universe insisted, what can I say? This is Alex Terranova, founder of Dream Mason. He's sort of a newbie to some of this frequency stuff, and he's going to help keep everything balanced, grounded, and relatable. So this show isn't just for the experts to nerd out on all things metaphysical, but it's an open welcome space for everyone to explore the mysteries of the universe and raise our frequencies together. Today, we get really deep and nerdy into some of the science behind metaphysics with our special guest, Dr. Herman S. Jr. He is a doctor of metaphysical psychology, as well as a sought after global change agent for entities across countries, industries, and languages. He's a highly published author, um, including a Harvard University published author and over 50 different academic uh, and business uh, research papers. Very excited to have him here to chat with us about all things frequency. This was one of those episodes where I'm like, this person is so much smarter than me. (laughs) Or I just, do you feel like that way too? Absolutely. (laughs) So much of this went over my head um, and I'm going to have to re-listen to it myself a couple of times, but I loved tackling frequency from a different perspective. Well, he also does this really great job of, he uses metaphors and examples. And he's funny. That brought, yeah, that brought it down though, that made these really high level concepts digestible and understandable, which I was surprised by because when we started with him, it was clearly had a sense of humor and a personality as we were getting to know him right before we recorded. But when he was talking about con- concepts and theories, I was like, wow, I might not be smart enough for this. But he has this beautiful way of really making, letting us inside his mind and inside these theories. And so on this episode, we talk about what does it even mean to be a doctor of metaphysical psychology? We talk about like, what is meta? We talk about things being beyond what we can sense and perceive. We talk about everything being connected, the six degrees of connection, which, you know, people talk about six degrees of separation, but he really shows us how like this is a a real thing. I should say Um, we talk about, we even get into parenting, which was really interesting. He looks at how our mindsets impact the way we grow up and how as a parent, you can show up in different ways to create different results. I think one of the things that blew my mind a little bit was he talked about the impact he can have in two hours, two hours with somebody and how he almost like dissects their mind and then like helps them rebuild it. Yeah, I I could go on and on because there's so much more about what we get into chaos theory, where the world is right now, divorce, but I think I'm going to leave that because I think that's enough. I don't even know if people can understand me right now. (laughs) (laughs) They're just going to have to listen to the episode and find out all the juicy details for themselves. What did he, what's his definition of frequency shifters? Uh, You won't be shocked. It goes deep as well. He included both Latin and old English definitions of frequency um, and assembling. So Latin and assembling in great numbers, a crowding crowd, multitude, a throng, um, a shift. Old English was arrange, place, order, divide, partition. 
Ergo, a frequency shifter is one who is able to shift or change the frequency and vibration of one's own state. Also, it is possible to be one who can change such of another entity, a planet, in other words, uh, or the, the planet, so somebody who can um, be deeply skilled uh, with shifting things on the earth as well. That's why I love That's that exactly, added piece. That's my definition. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is something that's so desperately needed in the world today. So, so just like uh, the first episode here in season uh, two, we are, we're going to send you right into the episode. No more fluff, no more talking about it, but let's head right into this interview. We hope you enjoy it. So Dr. Herman, uh, the first thing I really want to ask you is how you became a doctor of metaphysical psychology. Um, but for anybody that's not familiar with what that even means, could you also give us a little bit of an explanation? What is metaphysical psychology and how were you drawn to it? Oh, actually, I don't know. I was hoping you and Alex can tell me where it is. Oh, I got this. I will answer, I will answer this question. I'm gonna, Very I'm, gonna improv, I'm gonna improv this really fast and we'll see if I'm right. I was so, not expecting that. That was hilarious. <laughs> so basically put um, metaphysical psychology, if we break it down to etymology, meta is Greek meaning above or beyond physical, of course, meaning pertaining to the physic, uh, physical, excuse me, technically physics. And psychology meaning the study of the mind, also reinterpreted as the study of the soul. So how do you make that into a cohesive sentence that everyone understands? Basically put, it means the study of the mind or soul by seeing beyond what the senses can perceive. I never like answering that question because of this reason. Uh, as we advance as a society, especially in sciences, definitions are becoming more blurred. So for example, the definition of metaphysical psychology, well, metaphysical psychology used to incorporate meditation and visualization and affirmation, but now science takes over and says, well, technically that's a part of physics or technically that's a part of biology. So metaphysics is becoming an ever decreasing field, uh, an ever shrinking field that's being taken over. So it's like, well, technically it's metaphysics, but now it falls under uh, neuroscience. So that's why I don't like answering that question too much, but I hope I answered it to everyone's uh, ability to understand it. And how did you, like, what was your bridge into this field? You know, you don't, I, I, we, I ask this to people all the time that are on this show. It's like, we don't, in, in junior high, high school, this wasn't presented as a career option. No. So how does one find their way to this? Sure. So since, and forgive me, Corrine, that was the second part of your question that I didn't answer. Uh, so <clears throat> yeah, I caught it after Alex, but I can, so, uh, so basically with me, I'm, I'm a total nerd. I mean, study, study and workaholic. Since I was eight years old, I started studying all kinds of different things and trying to make the connections between seemingly unrelated things. So I would study various things. So that led me up to metaphysics. Metaphysics, again, beyond or above the physical is where you divorce from yourself, your atmosphere, and take a what's called a meta analysis, analyze everything from above or beyond. So you can make certain connections that most people can never make. And that's not an exaggeration. So with that path that naturally took me into metaphysics, and I've always been interested in psychology because in my opinion, uh, psychology is the art or science where you could really influence an entity, whether that entity is one person or an entire planet. So I love coupling those things together. And the fact that it's metaphysical psychology, it helps you incorporate everything that you can see, hear, and touch your senses, plus beyond your senses. Um, and then I just got very fortunate to find out the doctoral program in metaphysical psychology. I'm curious to like, why is this, I get why it's, I should say this different, but like, I get why it's important from a, from like when you're in the field and you're, you're studying it, why is this important for regular people who are living their lives? Like, why is this a, a relevant topic? Sure. So my, that's my doctoral degree, 
I, I actually have six degrees, two bachelor, two master, one doctor, and one associate. It's only because I'm too dumb to get seven degrees. So <laughs> that's what I always say. <laughs> uh, but sometime before I, I leave this point, I'm hoping to get a second doctor. And I say that because um, when you study all these different fields, you see how everything is interconnected. And that's not some kind of like hippie stuff or anything like that. It's, it's very hardcore. If you need to increase your sales by 5% in the next 30 days, you need to understand the interconnectivity of things. So my main role is I train and consult entities on what's called step change. Step change just means tremendous change, okay? Very quick, tremendous change. By helping them use the ability behind history's greatest thinkers. All the greatest thinkers across human history, you will notice one similarity. The commonality is that they were able to see beyond superficial and distracting variables. They were able to see the to the bottom most level and see the interconnectivity of things. So for example, you have Da Vinci, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Avicenna, uh, Michelangelo, Gandhi. Many people say different names, but the commonality is that they were able to be masters of one algorithm, one universal, one principle, whatever you want to call it. And it was able to affect this landscape, this landscape, this landscape, this landscape. And that is the reason why people say whoever is the greatest thinker who ever do that. So to get back to your question, Alex, it doesn't matter if you're a single parent or a multi-billion dollar executive or police, whoever, it doesn't matter what you do, what you want to do, or your background. If you can see this interconnectivity, the system of interconnectivity, as I call it, and you could make step change, tremendous change, then it doesn't matter what you want to do. If you want to write a book, if you want to have an exceptional podcast, whatever, you're able to do it on such a grand level that most humans who walk this planet can't even contemplate. And that's not an exaggeration. Now, when you talk about step change and your program, what are some of the, you know, obviously we can't get into all of it today uh, in a short podcast or you wouldn't have an extensive program, um, but what are some of the key tools or methods that you use to teach people or what are, I guess, some of the core concepts that you're actually teaching people about energy and, and metaphysics that allow them to create this change? Sure, sure. So basically I use only two channels when I do this, I call it holistic vision, okay? <clears throat> Loosely call it holistic vision. So I use two channels. One is psychological strategy and the other is the system of interconnectivity. Psychological strategy is basically the method that allows you to get into your mind, completely destroy it, completely destroy it and put in a brand new cognitive schema or what's called a thinking foundation and a vision, okay? The second aspect is the system of interconnectivity, which I touched upon seeing how everything is interconnected and everything is related. So for example, this training, some people may say, oh, that's just stupid. It's met metaphysical stuff. You know, what can you really do with that? No, I train multi-billion dollar companies, police, doctors, lawyers, universities, all over the world, across languages for over 10 years now using this. I don't capitalize on it's metaphysical because you have to watch your language. Plus I'm in academia, I teach at many universities across the world, you can't say certain things, but it's really the same thing, it's just different lingo. So when I'm training whoever, cops or doctors or lawyers, I'm bringing in a tarot deck and I'm saying, look, I don't believe in tarot. I'm not saying it's right or wrong if you do or don't, but I don't believe in it. I'm an academic, but I use it heavily as a psychological tool. So I'll show them how to use psychological strategy with using the tarot and breaking into their mindset and revealing biases, revealing shortcomings, revealing abilities. And then going back to a system of interconnectivity, I'll show them that, look, if you're a law office and you want to increase your clients, you need to understand and use this, the principle, algorithm, universal, whatever you want to call it, behind music theory, because it's the same as that behind art theory. That's the same behind molecular gastronomy, which is basically fancy cooking, correctly stated. Those three things are related to uh, 
termite colonies, those four things are laid to the movement of ants, the bug, A-N-T-S, which is called myrmecology. So you're able to step back and see, oh my God, this really is all interconnected. And just like the greatest thinkers, if you go deep enough, you can see the universality, the commonality, whatever you want to call it, that you can apply as you raise your child, as you are crime solving, as you are doing uh, counterterrorism, as you're trying to heal patients. It's all the same rules. If you think it's not, and if you think this is stupid, then you're not looking deep enough. Oh man, there's, uh, there's, <laughs> I, there's so much to this and I the piece that I'm you kind of said it a little bit how it how it applies to all these different fields do you have like an example I really want to be able to see it for like your average person how it's accessible to them right if you're a big company and I can spend all this money to have you bring in to train all my people but if I'm a you know a parent or I own I'm an entrepreneur let's use yeah like the parent and their kids or something yeah, like a, a yeah, really basic. Sure, sure. So let's, uh, I just had a, uh, a parent, a single parent, a female in her, I want to say mid twenties. She has two kids and I believe they were like five and six, five and eight, something like that. And she came to me and she said, Dr. Herman, what can I really do? And now I'm not a, a medical doctor. I'm not a licensed clinician. I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm a different kind of psychological doctor. So I make that very clear. So I, I told her, well, let's see, what would you do if you were trying to influence someone? Because I'm sorry. So she said that her kids don't listen to her, her, mostly her son. So her son just doesn't listen and doesn't engage. So what I said was, well, what would you do if you're trying to influence someone, trying to make uh, make it at a networking event, let's say, okay, increase your business? Well, I would try to, uh, you know, have them like me and try to get them to be on my level. This is what she said and understand me, be on the same wavelength. I said, okay, that's true. Take that algorithm, what you just said, and apply it to child rearing, basically bringing up your child, apply it to this one kid. So never, this is funny because I'm not a parent. <laughs> so never go to your, your kid and say, look, do this, do this. I mean, yeah, it can work. It has worked for human history, but there's a <laughs> grand of. way of doing things. Always there's a grand way of doing things. So when you get them to understand what you're trying to do and get them involved in the decision-making or the punishment or whatever you want to call it in the change of attitude, then it's not a guarantee, but it's a much higher probability that they will then be on your side and move forward. So let's see how that's interconnected. Same thing with management. If you have any kind of uh, employee on your, under your guys, uh, under your guide, and they just, you just don't get along one of the things you need to do that you can do is get them involved in decision making even if they're like really stupid try to tutor them in a nice way and get them involved in some kind of level of decision making to whatever percent it doesn't matter and let them know that so what you're doing is saying okay john uh you know what I, I have this one issue. I'd like to lead the team this way. I notice that you are good with this kind of person, this kind of inter interactive interaction, whatever you want to say, it doesn't matter. And you're not lying. Uh, so I want to involve you in the process. What would you say about this? So immediately, whether they hate you or not, they're at least immediately, Alex is laughing, and they're at least opening up <laughs> to the possibility of not necessarily helping you, but helping themselves. And that's also going into third variable of interconnectivity. That's also related to something called the Benjamin Franklin effect. I won't go into it too much, but you know about it. Okay, good, Green. So yeah, go into it just a little bit. Cause it's, 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 oh, sure. Sure. So basically now I'm, I'm a very blunt person. I don't play games. I don't waste time. I'm not PC at all. Uh, so basically uh, if someone doesn't like you and you want them to like you, one of the things you can do is borrow something from them. This is very simply put. Okay. Now what it's going to do, it's going to create what's called cognitive dissonance in their mind, in their self. They're going to realize that I hate Dr. Herman, but 
let me help him by giving him this because then I'll look better. So when you walk away, even if you don't need that book or whatever you're borrowing from them, that's irrelevant. They're going to continue forward with a percentage of a dichotomy. Now, nothing's a guarantee with any general algorithm or principle, um, but it most of the time works. They're going to walk away and they're going to start to break apart their hatred. I'm going to say again, I'm blunt for Dr. Herman and say, you know what? I gave him this. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're okay. I guess, I guess we can talk about this. It's a typically a slow process, but it's much faster, tremendously faster than if you do the typical techniques, like why don't you like me or something like that. So going back to your question, Corinne, whatever you want to do, going, if you want to be a single parent, like I said, with this example. So I got that, that mother, that single mother to understand how to get the child involved in the decision making and say, well, how would you feel if this kid came up to you and hit you? Oh, I wouldn't feel good. Okay, so do you think that that's fair if you wouldn't feel good to let others feel that way? It's what you're doing is you're opening people to new possibilities. You're opening them to different thought processes, even kids. And you're able to see things that normally people don't do and don't even think about. There are other everyday examples that I actually have on my website with computer programming, department secretaries of no nonsense, immediately applicable uses of this as well. Thanks for those examples. Um, and they, I think they make Right, perfect sense. All those things that you just talked about with the parent and the child. I think all of us, either we've all been parents or children, and yeah. most of us could probably look back and be like, "Man, I wish my parents had behaved somewhat differently." Right, like almost all of us. Yeah. In your, I know you have a book. What everybody else didn't love just hearing, as I said so, <laughs> as the main answer to every <laughs> question. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, I know you have a book, right? Uh, that is, uh, what's it called? What's it called? It's called um, Foundations, yeah. sorry, Resetting Your Mindset, Using Universal Foundations That Surround You Every Day. Yeah. Is this a, I haven't actually seen the book. Is this a book that like I could read or is this more of a, obviously I can read it because I can read, but is it I'm like sure. a, a, a book that I could read and put into practice or is this kind of more like medical journal study, you know, not, not really somebody, something your average person can use. Understood. No, I actually have two books. That's the second book. It's okay. uh, and don't feel bad about the title. I never remember the titles of my books. So when I call bookstores, they're like, Dr. Herman, what's the name of your book? I'm like, I don't know. I'll just look up my name. So, uh, and they say that's a common <laughs> thing actually with authors. So I didn't feel bad after they said that. Uh, so to answer your question, the resetting the book that you said, which I don't recall the title now, uh, the, my book <laughs> is actually a, a workbook. It's the workbook on what I loosely call holistic vision. I say loosely right. because I like to leave information for the people. I'm not interested in you know keeping names for myself. Uh, so it's the interactive workbook on this program, whether you call it holistic vision or psychological strategy, whatever. And it is definitely usable to the everyday person. It is interactive. Like I said, it's full of many drills. They're deceptively simple. My entire program, my entire self, my core is deceptively simple. So you think it's easy, but it's actually very difficult. So in that, pro, in that book, you can read it and it tells you how to make the connections. It tells you how to think on a game changing level. I do not work with any entity that just wants to be very good. That's a waste of time. I only work with entities that want to be game changers, captains of industry, the best in the atmosphere. So it helps you to see things like the greatest thinkers across history. It helps you with the drills and tests you. Okay, what's this? What did you learn this? Now, how would you use this if you were a, uh, what's one of the examples? If you were an entrepreneur, an aspiring entrepreneur or current entrepreneur. Another drill is something like, what's the relationship between uh, speeding in your car 
and fatal police shootouts. What's that relation? How do you make that court? Yeah, I see your face, Alex. That's usually the reaction I get. Uh, so what's that relation? Also, what's the relation between parkour or free running? Hopefully everyone knows what that is. And pain management. So many examples that are seeming like, oh, this is just ridiculous. They're not interconnected. As I said, if you can't see the interconnectivity, you are not looking deep enough. So that book helps you to start the journey and really see transformation and completely deprogram and reprogram your mind. And then I also do guidance sessions. Of course, I do the whole program with that book, but I also do guidance sessions individually with that book. If someone doesn't have time for the whole program, that book is actually used in universities across the world for this program. I was just going to ask about that. Um, I had seen that it was it was used in universities and with businesses around the world. So is this an official, like, it's, is it only with the formal program that you put out or is it a part of other curriculum and use it in other avenues as well? Or can somebody like just go buy the book and like read just the book? Understood. No, it is, it is my program. It's, it's something that I created. I just have been very fortunate to use it across the world and it is possible to just buy the book. It's available in print by Harvard bookstore and uh, it's available digitally by Google books, Google play books, something like that. So yeah, you can just go ahead and buy that if you're like, ah, I don't have time for the program, I just want the book. And you can also reserve or, or book a session with me. Typically it's two hours minimum with the book. This work is extremely intense, extremely interactive, very invasive. It is not for the casual learner. We're talking about a tiny bit of time that I have to help you to completely destroy how you see and think where your cognitive schema, your thinking foundation and your vision have been created since before you were born. Yes, our mindsets are created while we're in the womb before we're born. That's one of the ways we learn to speak quickly uh, and, and acquire language. So I have a tiny bit of time. So you really need a minimum of two hours. Four is ideal, but two hours is a great start. Uh, and I remember you put in your uh, application about what it means to be a frequency shifter. You would put either the ability to shift or change uh, your own state or your own state of being, your own mood, or to shift and change the state or the mood of others. And I found that really interesting, um, especially with you know, what they say about energy, that energy, it can't be created, right? It can only be transferred or transformed, uh, right? So it can only, it can become something else, which is essentially what you're, you're saying you teach people to do in this program as well. Like it, it sounds like the program works more with changing yourself, but more almost impacting the state of someone else. Of course. Of course. So now we get into the possible dark area of, well, that's manipulation or that's, you know, whatever, call it whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, it's no different than when anyone is selling themselves. It's no different than when you're going on a, a first date. You're not going to reveal everything about you. You're not going to reveal your flaws. Also at a job interview, when you have your first client as a business owner, you will not say, oh, thanks, you're my first client. I just bought this laptop, this suit I got from Walmart yesterday. You're not going to say that. Now, technically, yeah, someone can say, oh, that's manipulation. Look, that's how the world works. If you want to say that, fine. Say whatever and go away. Uh, but that's, that's, I told you I'm blunt. I, I'm blunt because I deeply love people. It very much hurts me when I see people suffering on a very deep level. So uh, going back to your question, uh, when you change yourself, however you do, you're automatically changing your ability to influence others. And just like your twos is show with, I'm sorry, I'm going to say his name was Eric. He talked about the skin cells. We understand through science. And this is a long time ago. I'm well versed in, in science and everything. Uh, a few decades ago, uh, if you take someone's skin cells and put them a few hundreds of miles away, you remember he said when they hook it up to a, uh, a frequency reader, you could see immediate action, which is called spooky action at a distance in quantum physics quoted by Einstein. You can see how when you interact with this person here, the skin cells that you take off of their body 
and now have hundreds of miles away from them, there is a connection and a change in them, even though they're dis, uh, they're they're divorced from the person. That's correct. So when you do these things, you're influencing others. You're also able to uh, to influence others on a certain level to help you to to be more beneficial for you, to be more positive for you, and you're able to influence others to ideally help create that pay it forward uh, uh, domino effect for humanity. So you're really able to influence a lot of different things. And like I said, with the system of interconnectivity, whether you like it or not, whether you know about it or not, whether you respect it or not, everything's interconnected. So when you do this program, this book, whatever, if you do it with me, if you do it by yourself, it doesn't matter. You're automatically going to be able to influence yourself, of course, but then help others influence them. Let's go back to the parent example that you asked me about specifically, Corrine. So I'm telling this parent, this mom, single mom, to influence her child so he can act differently. And I'm teaching her the psychological strategy to be able to see this way for herself and come up with these ideas. And I'm teaching her to use the system of interconnectivity, like I mentioned with you, ben Benjamin Franklin effect, the management effect, the parenting effect, the child rearing effect. And this child, and it worked, of course it worked, but she told me later it worked. This child then is able to be influenced and do things to a better level, you know? Uh, so that's influence. Now, anyone can say, oh, you're manipulating them. Technically, it's true, but it's for the better. And of course, with any tool in existence, you can use it for good or bad. So hopefully everyone uses this for good. So we, so I don't think that we've, there's ever been a time and, and you probably know more than me, but like then it's human history where everything was just like perfect and lovely and there were no yeah. problems. Right. <laughs> and Right now in our current world, it's no different. Now, I think what I love about this conversation is what I feel like right now is the difference between the problems that we're experiencing versus maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 100 years ago, is they feel more interconnected. We're experiencing things, right? Whether it be Russia and Ukraine, it feels like the world feels in interconnected with it. Whether it be something like COVID, whether it be um, even political things, it feels like it's not just you know my issue or a state's issue, or rather an individual community. It really feels like there's this global connection, which is really what you're speaking about. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to do this for me or for us and the listeners, is there like something from the from your expertise that can give us some hope here? Because yeah. it's a tough time right now, right? And we're yeah. all, I think we're all yeah. feeling it and obviously in very different ways, but I think the interconnectedness of it has it feel heavier than it really does. Because if I want to go, you know, if I want to call Corinne to like share and be reassured, she's dealing with the same things that I am and she can't just, yeah. you know, right. And, so, and whereas in the past that might not have been, right. we might not have seen it like that. Right. Yes. No, I feel we're all doomed. There's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Interview ended. <laughs> no, I, I, unfortunately, I, I agree with you. I wish I didn't um, because I wish we had more hope available. Now, this is a very common theme with my colleagues in academia and business across the world. So to answer your question, Yes, anytime you have any system, and this we understand through systems theory, general complex or general system theory, complex adaptive systems theory, and uh, even chaos theory. Okay, anytime you have a system and you introduce a, a variable, a, a, an illumination variable to whatever degree, okay, a variable where that system starts realizing things, whatever those things are, to whatever degree, you're going to change the output that that system can do. So with 10 years ago, going back to your specific example, 10 years ago, we were in a state that allowed us to see a certain distance and certain things. But now with the interconnectivity of everyone waking up and graduating from that first impetus, that first illusion, um, illumination variable that was introduced 10 years ago, again, staying with this example, they're going to graduate, uh, ideally, you can also retrograde, but that's a bad thing. Uh, they're going to graduate and understand more and more and more. It's the same concept 
as education. First, you have first grade, then you build upon it second grade, then third grade. As you see, we're, we're talking about interconnectivity and similarities here. That's exactly what my program is. So with any system, you're going to see a graduation. And we do have a, a, a coalescence, a planet that was more divided. It's still divided, but was more divided. And with our introduction of, 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 uh, of uh, whatever you want to call it, new ageism, metaphysics, yoga, uh, holistic healing, all these themes are adding up and creating a domino effect or what some people may call a snowball effect. And it's allowing us to graduate on a more, whatever you want to call it, spiritual level or connected level or uh, humanitarian level. So to answer your question a little bit more, there is a lot of hope and we do see it materializing in everyday interactivity and on the news, but watch my words here, but um, you won't see the materialization on certain news media. You, you have to you have to research yourself, let's just say, okay, I don't wanna go into that. Uh, so, so yes, we do see in interconnectivity, we do see a, a state, a global, a worldwide state of people realizing that they're interconnected, realizing that they should take care of each other, realizing that this, whatever this is, will affect the planet in a positive way or a negative way. So you, we are graduating towards a, I'm gonna say a singularity, not the negative singularity, but the singularity in consciousness where we all are more unified. However, my colleagues and I for over 10 years have been discussing this across business and academia. The, the rate at which we're moving is just so slow. It's ridiculously slow. So we hope, my colleagues and I, uh, we hope that things will change with the speed and we do what we can to help change that speed. So we do a lot of humanitarian work. So my colleagues who are PhDs in whatever field or JDs, JD mean lawyer, of course, or MD will do uh, free work for people in Africa who can't afford it or people in India who can't afford it to, to perpetuate this knowledge to kind of give a little push. Not that we're all that and we can do everything, but do whatever we can to pay it forward and help us to realize that we're more connected and to have benefits from that as well. Oh, that's all fascinating. And to hear like the scientific version kind of of um, what a lot of people in the spiritual world talk about as ascension and the fact that we're elevating, we're, we're growing, we're ascending, we're, we're expanding in lots of different ways, um, one energetically and magnetically through the shifts in the planet and the electromagnetic field, like the actual things that are happening in the physical realm that are changing the way energy um, exists, I guess, or the way we experience it as humans, the level at which we experience it. Um, and then, um, also just spreading that, yeah, spreading, spreading that knowledge and that wisdom. So that's beautiful that you and your colleagues have, are also doing humanitarian efforts to spread the knowledge out, outside of your, outside of your programs. Um, what is, or is there like a reason that the speed is important or, you know, when you say, oh, it's not happening fast enough, what, what does that mean? Or, or where do you, where do you get that in terms of like, what is fast enough? What, how fast should we be moving and how can we move faster? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, speed is subjective. So with me, nothing is ever fast enough. I mean, I move stupidly fast in everything I ever do. So I'm one of those people I actually... <laughs> I actually showed a video to some colleagues last night um, about me. Um, and like I said, I'm very blunt. I use uh, colorful language when I'm training uh, people, whoever I'm training, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm very, very direct. And I said, I, 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 my, my colleagues and I, we, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember what I was trying to say here. Oh, the speed, sorry. So I just shared a video saying how, I don't tolerate nonsense and stupidity. Naivety is okay, but I don't tolerate anything else to any instant, uh, any instance. So I'm one of those people that if you want to start your business and you tell me, I'm going to call you very quickly and 
bother you and say, did you start your business? Did you start your business? If you want to do something, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. You want to get into school. You want to start a business. You want to be a better parent, whatever. Do it now. Don't put it off to tomorrow. Move. I was, I was going to, I got to watch my language. Move and, uh, and get going. Don't give me any of the excuses. Just get it done. So to answer your question, Corrine, I move that way. And my colleagues fortunately move that way. Now, speed is subjective. So for us, the speed is way too slow because we are of that mindset. However, if you ask someone who's more, uh, I hesitate with this phrase, but more, you know, sageistic or wise or spiritual or whatever you want to call it, they'll say everything's in time. It's, you know, nature has its own time, which is true. I just like to speak. I was just thinking that. I was like, well, everything happens in perfect timing, though. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's subjective. So, so to answer your question, that's why we do what we do, especially me. Of, of my group of people, I'm like the most. Let's go. Get it done. Um, don't schedule this meeting for tomorrow. Get on the phone right now. Because, and I'm only that way, and my colleagues as well, but especially me, because I am a, a huge humanitarian where I deeply care about people. I'm actually extraordinarily sensitive, you wouldn't guess it, uh, when it comes to people suffering. So I like to get moving because I always remember that while you and I are talking right now, and while we're doing whatever we're doing, going to the grocery shop or whatever, there are people all over the world that are crying right now because they can't put food on the table. They're crying because they have a crappy job and their boss harasses them or whatever. They're crying because they live in a disgusting neighborhood in slums and everything. So while we're here talking, they are right now suffering. So we need to get going and move our A's uh, and do whatever we can do to get this out there now and help those people. So that's why I and my colleagues say we need to help speed this up however we can, even if it's only 1%, that's 1% more than the speed it was going at before we did it. I, I love that both of you put both sides, right? Like everything happens perfectly in nature and then the other is like, this is why um, it's important, why there's actually like pressure to, to make a difference because of situations. And I'm just present like with both of you that they both exist at the exact same time. Yes. That Dr. Herman, what you're up to is actually an example of the perfection that Corinne is, is speaking of. Like this is what it's all, they, that we, we get so caught up in like this way or that way, but they both to, to the point interconnectedness, they're both actually happening at the same time. The 1% is perfect at the speed. And if you want to go faster, that's perfect also. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's sometimes hard for us to be with as people that two, two almost conflicting ideas can coexist. Yes. Absolutely. Um, but I loved like being on the other side of this. This was so much, uh, I had no idea what we were walking into here with you. If we were just <laughs> going to not understand anything you said, or if we were going to understand anything, everything. And you've done a, such a brilliant job of laying out something that I think is very, very complex and very, very intellectual in a way that you've made very simple that we can understand. Is there anything that we didn't ask you or that you feel like you need to share or say before we wrap up, like kind of give you, you know, have the last word here. Thank you. And it, it's funny that you came in with that right now because it's like Kareen and I were speaking and we're of various speeds and then you come in from the metaphysical aspect, the meta-analysis aspect, and see how you tie it all together. So this was a great uh, trio here. <laughs> and to answer your question, I would just say uh, one thing that I would like to say to help whoever is watching this or, or listening to this on the podcast. If you never remember anything else, just remember to fall in love with the word divorce constantly now not marriage divorce of course i shouldn't have to say that but uh, constantly fall in love with the action of divorce constantly divorce yourself from your own atmospheres whatever you're doing whenever you're doing it as often as possible if you're a single parent and you're parenting your child rearing constantly question yourself and your 
in your, your methods, even if you think you're the greatest multi-billion dollar executive or cop or parent, whatever, there's always a better way. So constantly divorce from that way, step out of that atmosphere, do a meta-analysis, analyzing from above or beyond, and see if that's the best way. Also, see how maybe something was done differently in a different field, and then see if you can use that in your atmosphere. So I was on another interview a while ago, and this one lady, I have to remember the question, I'm sorry. This one lady asked, a, you know, basically, how do we do this? And I said, the answers, like my book, uh, Universal Foundations That Surround You Every Day or whatever it's called, um, the answers to everything surround us every day. And that is not an exaggeration. If you can't see it, that's your fault. You need to open up and see it. So, for example, like we talked about with how do you bring up a child? Well, I don't know how to, what to do, Dr. Herman. My child doesn't listen to me. But wait, I do remember when I was a manager or when my manager was a manager and I overheard this, he got this person, he or she, got this person to get involved in the team and the team started changing from that. What did that manager do? I don't know. But the manager seemed to be more personal, seemed to let that person in on more decision-making. I talked with that employee and he said, you know what? I hate Dr. Herman, but you know, he's sometimes okay now and I'm getting more opportunities to make decisions. So how do you relate that to your atmosphere, child rearing? Well, you have to divorce to be able to even see that. And then you can make the connections from there. So the key thing to walk away from is divorce. Always divorce yourself from what you think you're doing that's great or if it's terrible and see how you can do it again. Because remember, the first step with anything like overcoming a vice, overcoming some kind of addiction, negative, negative addiction, is you have to see the problem before you can change. And you have to be able to divorce to see what you're doing, how it's beneficial, how it's not beneficial, then you can move forward. And if everyone does that, that will be a tremendous step change to be able to do things better and move the world better uh, forward. That was, yeah, really, I love that. Really well said. Way, way, perfect way to cap this off. I want to make sure people know where they can find you and learn more about you, which is platinumsciences.com. That's the best, that's the place to go, right? Yes, thank you. Platinum Sciences is the Institute for Step Change. It's what I founded. But if you ever forget the name, you can just Google Dr. Herman SGR, which is my brand name. And then everything about me will come up, all my accolades and websites and everything like that. Thank you so much. Thanks for, for this conversation, for the time that you gave us. Obviously, your time is valuable. Uh, and you're making a difference for so many people in so many different ways. You could be getting your seventh, you know, your seventh degree right now, but you spent that time with us uh, and we're really grateful. Um, and this was another episode of the Frequency Shifters. Thank you and so. we're, I mean, such a privilege to be here with everyone and you, Dr. Herman and Corinne, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Frequency Shifters. We really hope that you got some value, you learned something, and that there's something from this episode that you can take away and use in your life. Who are you thinking of right now that needs to hear this episode? Please share it with them. Share this on social media, subscribe and like and leave a comment. And please, if you have a comment or an idea or something that you want us to talk about or investigate, leave it online and we will go into those and bring you that information. Please like, share and subscribe and we will see you next time.